What if humans could fly? Imagine stepping outside, stretching your arms, and just lifting off the ground. No plane tickets, no traffic, just air beneath you. If humans could fly, our entire world and daily life would change overnight. First, say goodbye to traffic jams. The morning commute? Just take the Sky Highway. Cities might look completely different, no need for so many roads or bridges, but flying humans would need rules, sky traffic lights, flight lanes, maybe even speed limits. Clothes would change too, we'd wear aerodynamic outfits to reduce drag. Of course, flying isn't without danger. Storms would be a serious threat. Lightning and strong winds could send you spinning. We'd also have to think about altitude, fly too high and the air gets thin and cold. Travel would be revolutionized, no need for airports, want to visit Paris, just start flapping. But how far could you really go? Flying takes energy and we'd burn calories fast. Sports would change completely, imagine aerial basketball or sky races. Police, firefighters and rescue teams would have a huge advantage in emergencies, but thieves could escape by simply taking off. Wildlife would be affected too, birds might see us as competition for airspace. Air travel businesses, they'd have to adapt fast or vanish entirely. Humans might spread out more, living in hard-to-reach mountaintops or remote islands. But maybe the best part wouldn't be the practical benefits. It would be the joy of flying just for the sake of it. Until then, we'll just have to settle for dreaming and maybe the occasional plane ticket. What if humans could breathe underwater? Imagine taking a deep dive without ever needing to come up for air. No oxygen tanks, no snorkels, just your lungs working like a fish's gills. First, your anatomy would change. Gills need huge surface area to pull oxygen from water. Your rib cage might shrink since lungs wouldn't be your main breathing tool. The upside? You could live entirely underwater. You'd hear muffled sounds like living inside an endless blue echo. Your vision might blur, water bends light differently than air. Communication would be tricky, speaking doesn't work well underwater. You'd need to eat and drink from the ocean itself. Saltwater dehydration would be a problem, you can't drink it safely. Freshwater habitats would become valuable real estate. You'd still need warmth, water steals heat 25 times faster than air. Clothing would change, goodbye fabric, hello sleek hydrodynamic suits. Cities might be built vertically like coral reefs instead of flatland grids. Predators would be a daily concern, you can't outswim a shark forever, but humans could also become the top underwater hunters. Travel would change, we could swim between islands without boats. Entire cultures could develop in the deep ocean, never seeing the sky. You'd still be limited by pressure, the deeper you go, the more dangerous it gets. So, would we still call it Earth, or finally start calling it water? What if humans had X-ray vision? Imagine seeing through walls, clothes, even your own skin. X-ray vision works by detecting high-energy light waves that pass through some materials but not others. If you had it all the time, your brain would have to filter layers of reality at once. Without filters, life would be overwhelming, too much information. Everyday privacy would vanish instantly. You could become a walking airport scanner. Doctors could diagnose broken bones without x-ray machines. Construction workers could check for hidden pipes and wires. But focusing at normal distances might become tricky. Your vision could never be fully off unless your brain evolved a switch. Fashion would change. People might wear lead-lined clothing. Sports could become unfair. Seeing inside the ball gives a huge advantage. You could read books without opening them. Jewel thieves would have an easier time finding valuables. But governments might regulate your vision like a dangerous weapon. Schools would teach new visual ethics. Movies could get weird. You'd see the actors' skeletons moving on screen. Over time, your brain might adapt, blending bone view with normal sight. Humans might evolve entirely new social rules around transparency. But one thing's for sure, you'd never look at the world the same way again. What if humans never needed sleep? Imagine never closing your eyes, ever. Normally, sleep lets your brain reset, repair, and store memories. Without needing it, your body would have a super-efficient repair system. You'd have eight extra hours every day, more time for hobbies, work, or travel. Cities would never truly sleep, constant activity around the clock. Businesses could run 24-7 with no night shift fatigue, but night could become just as busy as day. Our social lives might change, friends could hang out anytime. Travel times could be shorter since no one needs overnight stays. Health risks from lack of rest would vanish if evolution fixed it, but boredom could become a bigger problem, too much time, not enough to do. Relationships might feel different, no cozy nights together. Our sense of time might blur without the natural sleep pause. People could work multiple careers in a lifetime. The economy could explode with constant productivity, but art, dreams, and creativity from sleep might disappear. Our culture might lose bedtime stories, lullabies, and night rituals. We'd still need downtime, maybe rest breaks instead of sleep. With no sleep, life could feel longer, 
But would it be better? What if humans could live forever? Imagine, you never age, never die. Your body would repair itself perfectly, no wrinkles, no sickness. You could see hundreds, even thousands of years of history unfold. But overpopulation could become a serious problem. Food, water, and resources might run out faster. Families would never lose loved ones, but they'd keep getting bigger. Jobs could be locked forever by the same people. But you could master every skill, music, science, art with unlimited time, travel the world slowly and see it change over centuries. Wars, politics and society would shift dramatically and you'd live through it all. Relationships could get complicated, forever really means forever. Technology could advance beyond your wildest dreams, but boredom could become the biggest enemy. You might forget more than you remember after thousands of years. Death wouldn't be a fear, but accidents could still end you. Would life still feel precious without an end? What if humans could survive in space without a suit? Imagine stepping into outer space without a bulky spacesuit. You could walk on the moon or Mars like it's a casual stroll. Breathing? Easy. Your body would create its own oxygen. No more freezing or boiling from extreme temperatures. You could swim through the rings of Saturn, literally, or go sightseeing near the sun without melting. But without needing protection, humans might start living in space colonies. Planets could be explored like neighborhoods. You'd see cosmic wonders up close, supernovas, comets, galaxies. But danger still exists, like black holes. Meteor showers could still be deadly. Space travel might replace airplanes for long-distance trips. People could work, study, or even play sports in zero gravity. Life on Earth might seem small after living among the stars. The question is, would we still feel at home anywhere? What if humans had super strength? Imagine waking up one day and you can lift a car without breaking a sweat. Super strength sounds like a superhero upgrade, but reality would get messy fast. First, your bones and muscles would have to be insanely dense. You could easily leap several stories into the air, but landings? That's another story. A single punch could break concrete. And probably, your friendship. Sports? Totally ruined. No one wants a 500-foot baseball home run every time. Car stuck in traffic? Just pick it up and move it. But doors, chairs, and even smartphones? Yeah, those wouldn't last long. Your biggest problem wouldn't be what you can lift, it'd be what you can't control. Airplanes? You could technically jump on board, but also crash through the roof. On construction sites, you'd replace cranes. Even everyday hugs would become hazardous. Grocery shopping? One trip. Carrying the entire store home. The military would want you, but so would Hollywood. The real danger? Our world is built for fragile humans. You'd need reinforced houses, reinforced clothes, even reinforced spoons. Sure, lifting a bus is cool, until you accidentally throw it into the next city. Without control, super strength would feel less like a gift and more like living in a world made of paper. But if you mastered it, you could rebuild cities, stop disasters, even save lives. Super strength would change everything. But the hardest part would be learning to be gentle. What if humans could control the weather? Imagine waking up and deciding today will be sunny, and then it just happens. With weather control, every day could be your perfect day. Beach weather in January, snow in July. Farmers could summon gentle rains exactly when their crops need them. No more droughts, no more floods, just a perfectly balanced climate, in theory. But here's the problem. Everyone wants different weather. Cities might fight over who gets sunshine and who gets storms. Some people could weaponize the weather, hurricanes on demand. Sports fans could clear skies for the big game while their rivals summon sudden downpours. Entire industries would change. No more storm delays for shipping or airlines. Tourism would boom. Perfect ski slopes, endless summer resorts. But ecosystems need unpredictability. Without it, nature might collapse. Migrating birds might lose their patterns. Rivers could dry up. Coral reefs could bleach without seasonal storms to cool the waters. And if every region starts customizing its own weather, global patterns could clash. Imagine a sunny day in Europe creating floods in Asia. Governments might set up strict weather laws, violate them, and you could face climate jail. Black markets would sell illegal sunshine or outlawed snowstorms. In the wrong hands, a single person could end all life just by freezing the planet. So, while controlling the weather sounds amazing, maybe the unpredictability of nature is what keeps the world in balance. What if humans could read minds? Imagine walking into a room and instantly knowing what everyone is thinking. No lies, no secrets, no awkward guessing. On the surface, it sounds amazing, but here's the catch. You'd also hear the thoughts you don't want to know. 
Your friend's fake compliment? You'd know it. That stranger's opinion about your shirt? You'd hear that too. Society runs on unspoken thoughts. Remove that filter and things get messy fast. Privacy? Gone. Relationships? Complicated. Negotiations, politics, business? Instantly transparent. Crime solving would be easy, but so would cheating, manipulation, and control. People might start thinking in different languages or code to hide. Or worse, everyone could just stop thinking deeply at all. Humanity thrives on mystery, nuance, and the unknown. If we could read minds, we might lose what makes relationships exciting. Maybe the real magic is not knowing everything and trusting others even when we can't see inside their heads. Because sometimes the mind's most powerful secret is that it stays secret. What if humans could time travel? Imagine no past mistakes, no mischances, no waiting. Time travel would make history flexible, but first the tech. If we could go back, humanity might stop disasters or cause worse ones. The butterfly effect is real, tiny changes, massive consequences. We could meet historical figures or accidentally replace them. The temptation to fix personal regrets would be huge, but if everyone changed their past, chaos. Economies could collapse from future knowledge trading. Wars could be fought before they even start. Relationships could be rewritten. Even reality itself might fracture. Some theories say you can't change the past, only visit it. Others say the moment you change something, you split timelines. That means infinite realities, infinite use. Governments would fight to control time travel. But maybe the best timeline is the one we're already in. Because time isn't just where we are, it's who we are.